So after literally thousands and thousands, well over 10,000 hours of use later, here's my honest experience of using the M1 Max Mac Studio for the past two and a half years, almost every single day. That's right. I've used this thing for video editing, sound editing, 3D rendering, 3D printing. I've used this thing with different monitors. I've used it with external SSDs, a NAS, a USB-C hub. I've used every single port on this thing. And I've also managed to push it to its absolute limits many times. So let's talk about this. And uh, I think we'll start with the pros because there is a lot to like about this computer. But at the same time, there are also some things that I do not like, which we'll also get to. And by the way, if you have the M2 Max or the M4 Max or a different version of this computer, maybe one of the Ultra ones, then a lot of the things I will say will still apply to your computer because the design hasn't changed much. Speaking of the design, I really like it. I think it's very simple, minimal, sleek, very much Apple-like. It fits any desks out of very nicely. It's also very small, at least compared to, you know, some traditional PCs. Sure, it's not very modular. Like if you want to replace the CPU, for example, you can't really do that. But if you don't need to do that, then this is pretty good. The second thing I really like is the performance. So as I mentioned, I've used this thing for all kinds of different tasks that are part of my workflow. And I've almost never felt like this thing couldn't do something like whatever I throw at it, it just does it. Now, how it does it has changed over time. Like, I feel like it's starting to show its age a little bit, but generally speaking, the performance has been pretty good. This is kind of what the numbers look like on paper. So it's been pretty solid. However, it achieves those results like good performance through a lot of swap memory usage. That's very common on this computer. I've noticed this, even though it has 32 gigs, I find it very limiting a lot of times. Basically, all swap memory is, is that when the computer is running out of memory, system memory, it will just use the SSD as RAM. Now, as far as performance goes, there is no real drawback. At least I haven't noticed any difference in terms of performance, but the real concern is your SSD because every SSD has a certain amount of times you can read and write on it. And once you run out of that number, it will in theory stop working right away. So when the SSD is being used as RAM, a lot of data is being written and read off of it. So you can run out of that number very quickly. So this is really an issue if you're planning to use this computer for like five, 10 years maybe. So far though, I haven't really had any issues. Number three is efficiency. I really like how efficient this computer is. Like when it's just on, not under some kind of load, you can expect it to use somewhere around 11 watts, which is not much. Sometimes your phone can use more while charging and under load, maybe you're rendering something, you're exporting something or benchmarking, then you can expect the wattage to go up to like 30, 50. Now compare that to like a traditional PC, on the lower end, you would see like 50, 60 watts. And at the higher end, you would see like 300, 500, sometimes more wattage. So the difference is quite a bit. This computer is also very quiet. I'm not kidding. I have never ever heard the fan on this thing. It has a fan, but I've never heard it. Doesn't matter what I was doing. I could have been rendering something in Blender. I could have been exporting a video while editing a thumbnail in Photoshop with like dozens of Chrome tabs open. No sound, nothing, silent. And that's honestly very impressive. I have an external SSD right beside, which is also very quiet, but it's louder than this computer. The port selection on this is also not bad. I think when you think of Macs, you think of, you know, being very limited by ports, but here that's not really the case. Although I think if you're truly a professional, you will still need to get some kind of USB dock or hub, which I also have. This is good, but in like a truly professional environment, I don't think this would be enough either. Like for example, if you use the headphone jack all the time, it's there, but it's on the back. It's not really practical to have your headphone jack all the way at the back. It's really hard to plug it in from the front when your computer is like somewhere in the corner. I also think the price of this computer is pretty good. I think this was released at like 2000 US dollars, which isn't cheap, but especially now you can pick this thing up for less than 1K, sometimes even seven, $800, which I think is actually a very good deal for this computer. Despite some of the cons that we'll get to, depending on who you are, those things may or may not be an issue for you. Now, if you're a professional like me and you also use your Mac for a professional workflow, you know how important it is to protect your Mac and especially your data from any kind of threat to like, I got a bunch of emails all the time with all kinds of links and everything. And even though I try to open all of them on a completely separate Mac, it's not always enough because my main email account is still at risk. So if that was to potentially get hacked, that would be a huge 
problem for my business. So recently I've been testing an app called Monlock, which is an app designed from scratch to work with Apple's built-in security tools, in addition to its own security tools to protect your Mac from Mac-specific malware. For example, it offers real-time protection, so it's continuously monitoring your Mac and looking for any potential threat to block it right away. You can also manually scan your Mac anytime and do like a quick scan or like a deep scan to look for any suspicious files that may have entered your system without you ever realizing, or you can also just schedule these scans to happen automatically on a regular basis. The UI is also very minimal and clean, so it's very easy and simple to use. So I'll leave a link below, check it out. You can use it for seven days, 100% free. And if you decide to buy it later, you can get 10% off your purchase by using code SPIXELMOON. Okay. Let's talk about some of the cons with this computer and by far the biggest one I think you will notice if you actually get this is the lack of GPU. Okay, there is a GPU inside here. It's a 24 core GPU, but it's nothing compared to a dedicated graphics card that you might have on a real computer like a Windows laptop or PC. And you really notice that, especially in a workflow that requires the GPU, for example, like Blender. I've used this thing for Blender and it took me like hours, like I think one and a half hours to render one frame in Blender. Even Cinema 4D, it took like forever to render one frame. So it's not really good. I definitely wouldn't recommend you to even go close to a Mac, especially this one, if your workflow is very GPU intensive. Even something like the Asus P16, a laptop will outperform this when it comes to GPU related tasks. Like it will render a Blender scene quicker than this computer. I tested it with the M4 Pro Mac Mini, which is about the same as this computer, and the P16 outperformed that computer. The second thing that I feel like you really, really would not like about this computer is the SSD space that it has, the storage. The base model, which is what this is, has 512 gigabytes of storage, which is just not enough. This video that I'm recording right now, just this talking part, will probably be around 60 to 100 gigabytes, so I can store about three, four, five videos in this computer, not including all the apps and everything that also take up space. So it is not enough for many people and certainly me. Now, I have been able to get around this by using a NAS and an external SSDs. They're not perfect solutions, but I've been able to you know, make them work. But ideally though, if I could go back in time, I would definitely spend more on the internal SSDs, get up at least maybe a one terabyte, maybe a two terabyte version. The third issue I have noticed on this computer is Bluetooth. It has Bluetooth and I use Bluetooth devices with this, like my keyboard and mouse, but you know, occasionally it will just randomly disconnect for like a minute and then it will just start working again. This has been an issue, I think, with specifically the M1 Studio models. I'm not sure if this has been fixed, but I hope it has because it's been kind of annoying, although it's not like a huge deal breaker because over the past two and a half years, I think it has happened maybe 10, 15 times. So, you know, it's not like the end of the world, but ideally it shouldn't have happened even like once. Number four, the speakers on this thing are literally garbage. They're probably some of the worst speakers I've ever heard on an Apple device, especially because you see Apple is one of the few companies that I feel like have really mastered the art of putting really good sounding speakers in pretty much all kinds of devices, no matter what the form factor is. Like look at your MacBook, look at your iPhone, look at your iPad iMax, right? They all have really good sounding speakers. Sometimes it's kind of hard to believe the kind of sound that's coming out of these devices, but this is literally the opposite. But I think because this is meant for a professional customer, they expect you to attach, you know, external speakers and a mic as well, because it doesn't have a built-in mic. And I think someone mentioned in one of my previous videos that the only reason why they think this even has a speaker is because apparently Steve Jobs mentioned something that a Mac should always have a speaker so that you can hear the boot up sound. So if that's true, I guess I can hear the boot up sound, but it's still very bad. Number five, you care about longevity, then the design of this computer is kind of bad and uh, annoying to be honest, because Apple has made this thing in a way that eventually it gets clogged up with dust, slows down, and you're forced to upgrade. You see, there is no screw visible over here, and this is like an intake vent, so a lot of dust is entering from here, and it's going inside, and I'm not even sure how much dust is actually in here. There's probably a lot, but there's no way to check. You can sort of do it, like I believe you'd have to remove this ring, and then there are screws inside, unscrew them, and I think this whole part just lifts but it's not really meant to be done by a normal customer. Like imagine if you have a very powerful car, but you can't open the hood to check what's going on inside in case something goes wrong. 
That's kind of what I feel like with this. And then speaking of it slowing down, I have started to notice that. I feel like it's starting to show its age. Now when I'm working on a project, I do notice that the timeline starts to lag, it chugs a lot. So I'm just starting to feel like that it might be soon time to upgrade if not already. But here's the thing, I don't actually update this thing. I'm still running it on Mac West Sonoma, which is two generations old when it comes to Mac OS. And the only reason for that is because we know that Apple slows down iPhones, that's not a surprise or at least you should know that by now. They have said this themselves and the reason they gave is to, you know, get a little bit more battery life out of an old phone. But let's be honest, there are some other reasons too, right? They want you to upgrade. But here's my question. What about a Mac that does not have a battery? Do they do the same thing with these as well? Because they also want us to upgrade, right? Because it might not have a battery. Like, do they actually slow it down? I've done my research and I couldn't really find any answers to it. So. Do you have a desktop Mac, like a Mac mini or a Mac studio? Have you noticed it slowing down after an update? This is something I would genuinely, I would love to know. I'll make a video about it. I'll, I want other people to also know like you should or shouldn't upgrade your Mac. So that's why I haven't updated it. But one reason for the slowdown could also be that as newer devices are released with more power, apps are updated by the developers to use that extra power. But when the same app is ran on an older device, which doesn't have that extra power, you have problems, you notice slowdowns. That could also be happening here because I have been updating my apps, but not the Mac OS itself. And by the way, my workflow hasn't changed. If anything, it has gotten more simpler. My projects are more simpler. It should require less power from the PC. So I know that's not an issue. So yes, overall, I think this is actually a pretty good computer. If you can find this now in the used market, especially for under 1K, I think you're getting a pretty good deal for what this thing is capable of. And I think this would still be a good computer for the next two, four years maybe, of course, depending on your work. Like for me, this is starting to feel like it's not enough, but for you, that might not be the case. But that's all for this video. Now, if you are actually interested in this video, I would also highly recommend you check out this video in which I compared this to the M4 Pro Mac Mini and the results were kind of surprising. So I think you're gonna like this too. I'll see you there.